Oh, g'day guys. Today is a very exciting one because we're going to be painting Baz. We're down here today at JD Media Blasting in Avoca, and I'm here with Jim. How you going, Sam? Today we're going to mask up Baz. Obviously, we want to leave the paint on the outside, so we're going to mask up our perimeter where we do want to blast and prep it ready for us to blast the firewall, all the underside, inside of the cab, make it all look like brand new, and leave the original paint on the outside. So it's it's all bad. Sweet. So basically, we're doing like a patina paint job. So we want to keep all of this here because it's. It's got a real nice patina to it, doesn't it? It's, it's Mickey Mouse, it's absolutely been a well looked after truck. So we're essentially gonna come from the door jam in and uh, go with the color match. You got a color match, didn't you, mate? So yeah, so what I done was I sent away one of these panels here to the paint shop and I got them to actually scan it on the, what do they call it? The spectro. The spectro. Yeah. On the spectro. So they've spectroed this old faded color and color matched it to it. Yeah, which is going to be a little bit, obviously a little bit shinier than that. They would have, when they spectrated it, they would have cleaned it up. You can see in, on the inside here, some of the original paint color. Everything on the inside here will end up being just like that. We're going to put a clear coat over it, so I guess it'll be shiny anyway, yeah, won't well, it? Yeah, it will too, won't it? Yeah, it'll just show all Yeah, the so it's, hopefully, yeah. the plan is, it should blend in pretty well. Whoa, what's this big thing? We're going to get all technical, mate. That's our blast nozzle. That's our big one. That's the big, industrial stuff. big Aussie blaster. It's not near that <laughs> Gonna use something a little bit smaller, a bit more refined. A bit more delicate on old Buzz. Yeah. He's pretty old, you know. Old bones. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to exfoliate him too much. <laughs> go back to the smaller nozzle. We've got a little bit more control over the direction that we're gonna blast that. We'll back our pressures down, because we don't need to blast at 110 PSI. This will rip off perfectly fine. It'll leave just the perfect kind of finish that we're after for paint and make it look brand new again. Sweet. So I'm gonna fire the big girl up, get all dressed up in my ninja suit, <laughs> send it. Look at the Toyota in the yard. <laughs> yeah. Jim's just found this in the glove box. A oh, roo shooter. What do you reckon that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's more reason to leave the spotlight in the roof. Yeah. <laughs> so we've just put it down on the ground. Jim reckons he's having, what are you having trouble with the lights? Yeah, of course the lights. So the lights are, uh, yeah, reflecting off it, making it hard for it. Not much left to go. We've just put it on the ground so he can finish it off and then we'll move on to the next step. We're inside the big shed now. This is where the paint booth starts. So this is a big paint booth, and that's a little paint booth. 
So Jim's just explained to me that you can blow the sand out, but you just blow it around all day long. So he actually, they use a vacuum cleaner and they vacuum it out. Make all his mum proud to see him doing some vacuuming. <laughs> It's basically gonna go around and mask up all these edges now. So we wanna keep this. We're gonna do a nice hard mask along this line because that last one was just a blast tape. We're gonna get it all ready for the paint booth. So inside here, this is gonna be all nice new beige and out here, we're just trying to protect that and leave it this rusty old color. Oh, a bit of Jim's precision masking. <laughs> There'll be painters out there that are just going, oh, what is he doing? <laughs> we're here to get the job done, aren't we, Jim? Not here to lick stamps, mate. So one of our key things is, after we've blasted anything, and especially here in the shop, after something's blasted, we don't touch it with our bare hands. So all this uh, bare, bare steel here, you don't want to get what the grease and oil yep. from your fingers. Even though you think you've got to clean hands, yeah, just your perspiration will actually make it go off within oh, five, six hours, you'll see rust parts. Even though it's only flash rust, but just, yeah, you just don't touch it, just leave it alone. This is like the most raw form of steel you can get, isn't it, I guess, so yeah. Especially, especially if you've got some product that you want to send off to powder coating. Powder coating is extremely, uh, it's just so touchy. If it doesn't have the right substrate preparation done, it'll fail and then it just starts to lift off. Unlike normal paints and epoxies and things like that, they extend the handle a little bit better. So we just, if, if anything's going off the powder coat, we blast it, get rubber gloves on, wrapped up and sent off. So then it's up to the powder coater to deal with. There you go, you've heard it from the professional. <laughs> get your mitts off. Your get your grubby fingers away from it. Or is this channel not allowed to have beers on? No, you're allowed to have beers on here. We're no strangers to love. Dash a bit of a rub down to just make it look all nice. This floor and everything here, it doesn't need to look as good because it's getting sound deadened. But this dash, we want it to look nice and shiny, so just giving it a rub down with that. I'm gonna go over the rest with some scotchy and get it ready for the colour. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. and you can see we've got a little bit of rust. Nothing major. In fact, it's pretty good for the age of the car. But the reason why this has happened is most likely our drain holes here have filled up. So if you've got an old patrol or cruiser or even a new car, whatever, every car has something like this to let the water and everything out of the door. Cause like, it'd get in through the window. It comes in through the top of your seal. Through, through the, the window, window seal. When you wind your window down, Somehow, like it obviously it loosens off your window seal between your glass and your seal here, and you end up getting dust and stuff. It's just naturally, it comes in, a little bit of water, condensation comes down the inside of your door. So, so yeah, they all have these drain holes. All doors will have some kind of drain. But yeah, just a good idea to make sure that you always keep an eye on that they're not blocked up and they're draining, or you could end up with something like that. Absolutely. After 49 years. <laughs> Jim's just laying a few dime bags. Yep. The wire speed's a bit average here, don't know. <laughs> Do your best, seam seal the rest. I've just been over this by hand and gave it a bit of a clean up with a little foam 
sanding pad. And I've just swooped in, still on, still on all the glory. What he's washing it down here with is just wax and grease yep. remover. Good so, wax and grease remover. The difference between good and, and cheap stuff is cheap stuff will just evaporate really quickly and doesn't give you a chance to actually wipe away any of the foreign stuff that's on in the paint. Still looks all shiny. And, yeah. 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 Yep. It gives you a bit more working time. Uncle Jim's tech tips. So you just got to be really careful because we only get one go at sort of cleaning and painting this. If we muck it up, we can't. That's it. She's all over. Everything that we're sort of doing, we've started, you know, down here and had a little go, made sure it looks all right. Put a bit of wax and grease on and gave it a wipe and it come up good. So we'll probably have to do what the same with the clear coat. We'll do a patch test maybe. Hopefully we don't get any runs. A bit of bird poo on it. <laughs> that little hole that you've seen there before, because it's been sandblasted, then it's been cleaned up, waxed and greased and then primed it's kind of neutralized we've got rid of all the rust so jim's just put a little bit of body filler in there sanded it up and put some primer on it you wouldn't even know so corey's just gave me this tool that you can use to check the thickness of the paint we're just having a look at baz this is a 49 year old paint 36 so this is just on raw aluminium just to show it should be zero it's a brand new hilux 75 we'll see how much paint i put on this i painted this myself 236. Jesus this is a good paint job, that one. <laughs> the VS, back when cars were cars. 136. That's probably the best one in the yard. Right, oh, you Nissan blokes. 143. So, paint is definitely going downhill. Brand new Hilux. It's only about half the thickness in the paint as these three cars here. Oh, hey, team. We've had a little bit of a stuff up. We have. <laughs> I forgot to bring the boys thinners and if we need to have the right thinners to go with the base coat otherwise they're not too keen on mixed matching brands and they didn't have any less than all which is the brand that I've got. Gonna shoot into a mate's place they got in here in Maryborough and if Cooley's head doesn't swivel off his shoulders from <laughs> looking around the workshop we might be able to get this stuff get back and get it painted today. This place is a bit flash for Maryborough Jim. This is the uh, upper end of town. Look at the bloody sunshine coast here look at the koala in the tree. <laughs> In the palm tree country now. God's country. Is this thing meant to be a gym? This is actually going to be a hotel. A hotel? Yeah. So it'll end up on a uh, property up overlooking a hill and you'll be able to book out the carriages. Work in progress that one too. <laughs> That's what we come for. A couple litres front. Save the bacon. Good job, buddy. <laughs> up down the main street. Oh, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't oh. it? <laughs> oh. We fit. Yeah, just the usual, thanks. I'm gonna write a letter to KFC to let them know that they need to make the uh, drive-through big <laughs> enough for the pub truck. For the big Aussie Cruiser. So we're just in here mixing up some paint. So this is the factory beige color of the 40 series of Baz, but it's mixed off the Spectro. So what that means is I sent away a panel to the paint shop and they put like their Spectro thing on it and actually got the color off the panel and mixed it to match that color. So I haven't got the color off the bin plate of what it says, whatever um, Land Cruiser beige or whatever it is. I've actually got this color matched to a panel with the Spectro. So it'll be interesting to see if it's the same. Just because the car was so old, I thought that, you know, it's gonna be a different color after it's aged for the last 49 years. Don't need no hateration, holleration in this dancery. 
me Let's get it percolated while you're waiting Soldiers dance for me Let's get it front up, upon that fun up, on up in this dancery We got y'all open, now you're open So you got to dance for me Don't need no hateration, holleration in this dancery Let's get it percolated while you're waiting Soldiers dance for me Just here in the booth. We've got the base color down now, so it's all painted. Looks pretty good. So this is just the base coat. It's got no clear coat on it yet. What do you reckon, Jim? Come on, well, it's done a great job. I reckon this looks, it's gonna look smooth. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna strip everything down and we're prepping up the bonnet and a couple other bits out here. And then we're gonna clear the whole lot. Make it look shiny. Make it look pretty. So we're gonna clear coat it all now. But the boys, they're, they're gonna do it in two lots. We don't wanna get an overspray from this on something that's sitting right here, so you gotta have everything spread out in the booth. Yeah, you gotta allow enough room for, as you're spraying, obviously you're creating some sort of overspray, and you wanna work back towards your extraction fan. Uh, if we bunch it up and have a heap of stuff in the booth, chances are we may end up getting a dry line, which we don't want. Everything that's in here at the moment, it's gonna be seen by the naked eye, and we want it to look absolutely smick, so we're just gonna separate a little bit. Also, this cab here, we're gonna leave this masked up and spray it in two goes. So spray all the stuff now, seal it all up, and then we're gonna strip it all down and remask it the opposite way around, yep. and then clear coat again on the second go. A little bit of prep to do. Once we've pulled that mask off here, we've got to prep the outside, ready for clear coat anyway, so. So we've got all the bonnet and the windscreen surround and everything's all prepped up. It's basically gonna clear coat everything in two goes in the booth, and then, yeah. We got that first batch of clear done and I ended up sending it home because it was getting late in the day now. The boys have just rang me up. It's been a few days and they reckon that they've got it all finished up. I'm just about to turn down their street and pull in and see what old Baz looks like now. They've painted everything else and apparently it's all ready to go. So we're gonna load it up on Big Frank and take it back to Emu and me and Jim are gonna put it back on the chassis and see what it looks like. Let's do it. Now you're getting me real excited. Wow. Time to get back on the chassis, hey? Everything else has been cleared now. All the outside of the cab's been cleared. We've pulled away all the masks. Cattle light rub, touch up, ready to go. The roof's had the white on the underside done. What's that over there? Oh. <laughs> Corey doesn't want to be in the video, but this is the man that has painted the car. So big thanks to Corey, he's done an amazing job. Like he's that. a little bit camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> the little hidden Easter egg. Peel back the roof and grab a zinger. <laughs> That's great. Oh, is this for me? <laughs> oh, it's empty. <laughs> How good is that? So these are all new on the inside and old on the outside, but clear coated. Look at the shine on that bonnet. <whistles> Old Colonel's looking a bit younger. Got his makeup on. <laughs> Haircut and a shave. Shiny. So we're gonna load up all this yeah. stuff onto, oh. have a look at that. Whoa. It's like a brand new one. Brand new second hand ball one. <laughs> We're gonna load up all this stuff onto the back of the old Frank. We're gonna take it over to Emu. And then we're gonna put it onto the chassis. Or we're gonna attempt to put it on the chassis without scratching it. <laughs> Carpet tiles. There's the interior done. This dash come up really nice. That's yeah, like really glass. That. I can see you. Give us a wave. <laughs> with your fat arm in it. With your, you know, your fat arm in it, checking fences. <laughs> all brand new on the inside, like brand new. And Look fresh. Fat armed wear on the outside. 
There's so many zinger boxes can get passed through this window. You know? <laughs> you know what's funny? This door isn't actually original door. So a bloke actually swapped me my mustard door that come on the car for this one. And how good does it fit in? You wouldn't even know. Like it's perfect. Oh, yeah. You know, this guy's obviously been checking a few fences. <laughs> I really like in this roof. We weren't really sure what to do with this roof at the start, were we? Uh, you haven't buffed this, have you? This is off this, the gun. So straight off the gun, the all of this. Spray painters out there that are looking at the page going, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. That's oh, we can make this better yet, if we want. I don't even think it needs it though. These back corners, this car. Look, there's me. <laughs> Keep coming. <laughs> Jim's got me a present here. 180 Zinger boxes. <laughs> They're all loaded up. Got Baz on the back of Big Frank. Jim's also got freshly painted canopy here and a tray for a customer. So a little bit dusty, but it's a Toyota graphite on the doors with a black. Hopefully she doesn't fall off. That ain't going anywhere. Jim's got a baby on board. <laughs> got the bonnet in the back. Hopefully it don't get scratched. Did you give that a slap and say it's not going anywhere? I pulled the rope and went, that's not going anywhere. Oh, it's not going to go anywhere then. Don't do it with Mac Preston. Guaranteed that. So we're back here at Emu. We've got the cab on the back of the ute. Were you in there the whole trip? The whole time. Frank's got good suspension. <laughs> Welcome to Emu. Are we working in the shed today? Yeah, we're working in the shed. Oh, wait there for a second. Whoa. Thought about the shed life shirt on. Second gym, first time in Emu. Traffic was terrible. Yeah, there was a few sheep on the road. We got there though, didn't we? <laughs> what a place. Is this where all the magic happens? This is where all the magic happens. Here's one of the trays Jim's painted. Well, Corey's painted. Corey Jim's painted. prepared. Yeah, Jim's organised. That one. Jim's are everywhere, man. Another one over here. Let's have a look at this one. It's a bit dirty, but got a layer of dust on it. This is cool. This is for Mr. CSS. Full polished wooden floor. What do you reckon of that? You haven't seen that yet, have you? She's done a good job, haven't you? Even like those gaps. Tell me he's left these gaps there so it doesn't warp and go all funny. Yeah. That's that's well thought out. A purple over black metallic. Right, oh, so the plan is we're gonna put that cab onto this chassis. And Jim's gonna give me a hand. He's come all the way over from Avoca to Emu. Big journey, isn't it? Oh, mate. You haven't seen this yet, have you? So they actually painted this chassis as well. It's a bit dusty. You haven't seen it all back together, have you? Not have, in person. Not in person. Haven't seen it back together. Haven't seen it with everything mounted up. And yeah, it looks absolutely. Imagine if some of your customers got to see this, the ones that were walking in when it was just all sitting there. They wouldn't even know what they were looking at. <laughs> Jim was telling me when this was sitting in their shed, everyone kept coming in and asking, what is it? And I didn't even know what it was. Well, I couldn't explain to them like this. I can't say, oh, it's Baz. And they're like, oh yeah, what's Baz? <laughs> Baz is just Baz. So the plan is we're going to try and roll that over to the other side of the shed, back Big Frank onto the hoist, lift the cab off, and then we're going to roll the chassis back under and put the cab back on. You reckon that sounds pretty easy? Tim, what are we going to do for the rest of the afternoon? I've got some fizz in the fridge. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I've already had one incident today. I backed there into my other U. At least it's got Armstrong steering. Whoa! So I was told last time that I used the hoist on YouTube that I'm not allowed to let it make that clicking sound. I broke the rules. You gotta hold the lock off when you put it up, when you're filming a video. I I'm excited. I'm, I'm nervous. Oh, it looks good. Be disappointing if it doesn't. <laughs> Bit late now. Oh, actually, Jim, I want to change the color. <laughs> Putting the last nut on. Two second job. Half an hour in real life. 
It's going to need a little bit of adjusting up. It's just sat on there with the, all the nuts and everything started. When I start putting guards, bar work and the bonnet and everything on, then I'll try and push it to where it suits. May even have to lift it up and space it accordingly just to get it all right before we do all the bolts up. Push it and have a look at it, eh? We can't have a look at it yet. We're not done yet. Don't stand up yet. <laughs> Let's get the bonnet on. Put the kernel back on. You know, if you screw a screw with a screwdriver, you are a screwdriver. Trust the old bunnies back again. Oh, I'm going to have to read Girls will be boys and boys will be girls. It's a mixed up moment. I'm shook up for a temple law. It's over to the driver's side. So it's just got to go across a couple of mil. Maybe if you can give it a push and I'll watch it. Cool. Mm. You got this trouble looking at king chrome ratchet? Just a good set of king chrome ratchet spanners would be the go, wouldn't they, mate? That's exactly right. You're starting to look like a car again, Jim. I reckon that we should push it out in the more open and have a proper look. What do you reckon, Jim? All right, get a big deal. Let's have a proper look. Oh, how'd you go, Jim? You're pretty full. Oh. Geez, that was a big smoko, wasn't it? That was a big smoko. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not the finished car. Obviously, there's still a lot of parts missing off it, but this is a car that looks like a car, isn't it? As you can see, I've still got a lot of work to do to this car before it's finished. Like it's got no windows in it, and it's got no pipe work in it, and no radiator. But it's sitting back on there. We haven't tightened up all the bolts and some of this bar work needs to be aligned and everything like that, but yeah. What do you reckon, Jim? You're pretty happy with how it's come up? I am, I'm stoked. I think the finish on it's come up pretty well. I mean, obviously we've tackled this job from a standpoint of being a coating. We wanted to make sure that we got encapsulation, want to make sure that the substrate was looked after. Obviously the new areas got blasted, so we knew that there was no rust left in them. Something that's gonna last, not like two days, a couple of weeks, or six months down the track, it looks mm. ratty. Even, obviously we did all the bar work and the chassis earlier on in the piece, and it was done with a really good quality epoxy, industrial epoxies, top coats are uh, 2K polyurethane. So it's come, we've come at the angle where we want something to last really long. Not necessarily look pretty all the time, and it will wear a little bit. Well, it wasn't actually meant to look that pretty. Well, there you go, yeah. And it does though. <laughs> well, it's and, it, and it's come up really nice. And you know, you can see the proofs in the pudding, a little bit of extra work that's gone in some smaller stuff there is allowed to pay off and get a bit of better finish on the product. So we're pretty stoked. Right, oh, so that, I guess that wraps up. That's the end of the episode, unfortunately. I... All, all together, mate. All together. It's uh, looking like a car again. Hand it back that, to you. To that, was the, that was the plan. And yeah, Jim's done an amazing job. Well, not just Jim, like yeah, all Corey, the boys. All, all my team, yeah, done a fantastic job. Done so. a fantastic yeah. job. So I'm absolutely stoked with it. And I'm glad that it's finally starting Excellent. to all come together. Happy days, man. Look forward um, to seeing it on the tracks. We're out ch checking fences. <laughs> yeah, checking fences, <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely over a vocal way. There's plenty of fences to check over there. For sure, mate. Where did that come from? Oh. Oh. Where did you... 
this is a new set of tyres for Buzz. Wow, they look epic. <laughs> they are. I wonder how they'll perform. They're pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, they're good, yeah. Uh, in the next episode, watch out as he tries to destroy these on their first run. <laughs> My next episode, I'm going to be testing out some tyres. I've also got another set of these which are for the gold view. And you're going to be seeing them in the next episode. I'm going to be testing them out with some new beadlocks. So if you're interested in that, it'll be a couple of weeks time. Every second Sunday at 4pm, I'm going to try and pump out episodes for the rest of this whole year. Jim's gonna be sitting down eating zinger boxes watching them. Got plenty <laughs> left over here. <laughs> you can hear something, right? We've got a flat tire, have I? I'll tell you what, you haven't got a flat tire, you've actually got four.